people romanticize about pirates like crazy, right? Like there are dozens and dozens of movies about pirates. There's an entire genre of music called pirate metal. So why are pirates so cool even though they like stole stuff and killed people? Well, part of it is because being a pirate seems like a lot of fun, right? Like you get to sail the seven seas and drink rum all day and hang out with your friends, steal stuff. Also because pirates kind of embodied a lot of our values, right? Like they didn't have slaves even at a time where slavery was pretty popular. They had a very democratic system of doing things, and why is that? The economist Peter Leeson wrote an entire book about that called The Invisible Hook, and he says that it's not because pirates were like noble or civic-minded or social justicely inclined, it's just that the incentive structure that they had set up for themselves didn't really make sense for doing bad shit like having slaves. In fact, you can understand a lot about pirates by just looking at the incentive structures that they faced. Starting with, why were they so nice? Most of the non-pirate ships that were around at that time were owned by some dude, some rich dude in Europe, and he would hire this captain, and the captain would hire a bunch of sailors, and they would go and sail and do whatever their mission was. Their incentive was to treat their sailors kind of poorly so that the sailors would fall in line and do what the captain wanted. But on a pirate ship, it was totally the opposite, right? On a pirate ship, everybody worked for everybody else. There was no owner in some faraway part of the world. And so your incentive was to treat people really, really well so that they would have higher morale so that when they were fighting and stealing shit from people, they would fight harder. And that's also why they didn't enslave people, right? If you enslave somebody to work on your pirate ship, then they're not going to fight that hard in battle, and next time you go to land, they might run away and tell people that you're pirates and that you're here in dock, and they can arrest you and kick the shit out of you right now. In fact, pirates were actually pretty democratic. Um, the pirates would elect a captain, and then the captain would have to serve the pirates and get the other pirates to like him. Otherwise, they would throw them overboard or just elect a new captain. In other words, paradoxically, pirates were incentivized to treat people better than the rest of society was. And even if pirates were actively robbing your ship, they still had an incentive to treat you pretty nice, as long as you weren't trying to fight them. And that's because there weren't that many pirate ships sailing the Caribbean at this point, and the ones that were wanted to protect their reputations. They wanted to basically have people surrender to them. And so what they did was they said, hey, if you surrender to us, if you give us all your stuff, then we'll be nice to you, we won't treat you badly, but if you try and hide stuff from us, or if you try and fight us, then we're going to kick the crap out of you. If you surrendered to them, and if you gave them your stuff without a fight, then they would let you walk away pretty easy. So if you know like anything about pirates, then you probably know that they have these giant black flags with skulls and crossbones on their ships, and that's not just a decoration, there's actually a reason why they do that. If you were paying attention earlier in the video, then you'll know that pirates wanted people to surrender immediately. They didn't want to have to fight them, and so they said, hey, if you surrender immediately, then we'll be nice to you. We'll take your stuff, and then we'll leave, and we won't hurt you. And so the Jolly Roger, the big black flag that they hoisted, acted as a way to signal to people like, hey, we're pirates, so you should probably surrender. According to economic theory, the best kinds of signals are costly to fake, right? So for example, you can't impersonate a police officer, you can get in a lot of trouble for impersonating a police officer. So when you see somebody in a police uniform, you know that they're probably a real police officer, because if they were a fake police officer, then they would be running all kinds of risk. The Jolly Roger followed the exact same principle. If you were a Spanish ship, for instance, and you hoisted the Jolly Roger and somebody caught you doing it, they would think that you were pirates and they would haul you off to bring you to justice. But if you were already a pirate, then, you know, that wasn't really such a big concern to you because you already had that problem. Most ships also knew that, like, hey, if we're attacked by pirates, our best move is probably to surrender because pirates had way, way, way more guns and cannons and other stuff on their ship to fight people with than most ships did. So if you fought pirates, you were going to lose. It was better to just surrender if you knew they were pirates. That meant that if you were a ship captain and you saw another ship and they hoisted the black flag, you were just going to surrender. Like, it wasn't worth picking a fight. So a lot of pirate ships, they took advantage of this. There was one pirate ship that went around, they only had five crew members, and they definitely couldn't win a fight. But just because they hoisted the black flag, people would just surrender to them, and then they would be able to steal people's stuff. The point of this book is that you can understand basically everything by looking at it through incentives and costs and benefits, right? Pirates are a good example because they're fun, Peter Leeson likes them, but you could do this about cooking shows, you can do this about apartments, you can do this about anything. If you want to understand why people are behaving in a way that you don't expect them to behave, just look at their incentives and you'll probably figure it out. So anyways, thanks so much for checking out Theo's Book Club. If you're new around here, my name's Theo. I make brief videos like this one going over the big ideas and the books that I read. 
so that you can learn everything that I learned and so that you can decide if you want to read these books for yourself. If you like this video, I hope you'll do me a big favor and hit the thumbs up button. That's right down there. That tells YouTube, hey, this is a good video. I liked it, so you should share it with more people. I would appreciate that because it's a brand new channel. Also, if you want more book review videos that make you smarter to pop up in your YouTube feed instead of the stuff that you usually watch that makes you dumber, then you can hit the subscribe button. And until next time, keep an eye out for the incentives and everything around you, and have a great day.